Again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to everybody, every mom out there. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to you. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to your mother. And I think of Genesis where it says, Honor your father and your mother. And this is a day where not only do you have to listen to the biblical mandate, if you don't do it, there are a lot of repercussions at home. I mean, I see a lot of kids here whose mom said, all I want for, for Mother's Day is that you come to church with me. I know that. I know that. It's okay. It's good. I'm glad that everybody's here. Today's a crazy day in some respects. Think about it. I mean, I'm one of the guys that early this morning before I came to church, I went to the store to get the freshest flowers that I could, and I wondered how many people worked all night long to set up all of these flowers at Central Market. And there were a bunch of guys. I mean, as I left... Cars were piling in the grocery store. <laughs> and after church, it's going to be worse. Um, but this is a day where you get to go to brunch. You get the one price fix, you know, get all menu. It's expensive. It's, it's a crazy and good day. And it's a day that for me that I've got to pause. And I, I mean, we, we all should pause. And for me, this is a day where... Um, I'm, I, I've realized how blessed that I am. I've got a wife who uh, is just amazing. She makes it all happen. She's the best mom in the whole world. She keeps our house kind of going the way it should. And I can't, I, 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 can't imagine, um, I can't imagine her not being mother to my child and wife to me. Um, she's tireless. She's amazing. She's a tremendous mom. I want to honor today my own mother, who raised me, who put up with me, who showed me patience and taught me how to hit a baseball when I was four. Feet to the street, Oliver, feet to the street, the ball's coming this way. My mom did that. My dad was jogging or something. <laughs> um, she took me on a mother-son vacation more than once. Taught me to fold clothes to help her. That was a smart thing to do. Um, Showered me over and over again with the generosity that only she could give when I squandered my allowance. This was my mom. And I've also, uh, I've also had a stepmom for the last 25 years, and she's been amazing. She's been loving. She's been right there advising and being a mom to me. Rita, she loves my dad, and it's great. Today's also a day that I, as a man who was adopted uh, as a baby, a newborn, you know, by my mom and dad, uh, just weeks old, I think about my birth mother. I think about the sacrifice that she made. Because as a 17-year-old scared girl who had run away from home, she wanted what was best for me. She was already thinking like a mom does. What does he really need? And so she made sure that I had a chance to get loved and cared for by somebody who could take care of me rather than uh, run away into the jungle or whatever. So I think about her. It's Mother's Day. Gosh, and then if I'm honest, I think about the, friend, uh, the many mothers that I've had of, of friends, friends' moms, who after school always had a cold-cut sandwich ready for me if I dropped in on them, or a couch that I could sleep on or sit on and hear some wisdom come rain down on me. Mothers take different forms sometimes, don't they? Yeah. All I had to do in my own house was hop the fence to go to the Werners, and Libby would have a place for me and start. She'd say, well, I know you haven't washed up, but get there. <laughs> yeah. So this is a day where I, I think about all that, and I think it's important for all of us to think about that. Our own moms, the people who have mothered us in some way, and, and let that just sort of percolate in, in your life today because there are some blessings to acknowledge. Now, I want to change gears here because we have a, some readings to ad address. We read a, a really interesting reading on Mother's Day in the book of Acts. And I hope that you paid attention. It was real quick. But it does, it's not the feel-good reading that I would have chosen for Mother's Day. <laughs> Let me recap it for you. Stephen is stoned to death. The end. <laughs> Catch that? 
Well, Stephen, if you've not heard of him, was, was, was the first martyr in the church in Acts. What we, don't, what we didn't get in our little reading today was a little bit more information about him. He was really important. In the early church, he was one of the great first leaders who is all about the gospel. He was all about the hope of Jesus Christ, preaching it to everybody. And he was one of the first deacons. He was an archdeacon. And their job was to take care of widows, among other things. So he would preach the gospel. He led this group of other deacons to take care of the widows that everybody had forgotten. And he patiently dealt with the religious authority, the Jewish religious authority, and spelled out for them the history of salvation starting in the Old Testament into the New Testament. They didn't like what he had to say. They thought he was threatening uh, Moses' standing. He wasn't. He said, no, no, no. Moses is Moses, but Jesus is Jesus. Let me help you connect the two. In short, they didn't like that. And ultimately, they, they stoned him. And you see the first glimpse, really, of, of, who, of Saul. And you know who Saul is? Saul is the guy who has a is is the guy who becomes Paul later. And it's a it's an amazing scenery where Paul or Saul is basically holding the cloaks of the, the soldiers who are killing Stephen. That's a whole other a whole other thing. But what do we see in this very short reading? We see a couple of things about Stephen, and this is important especially on a day like today. Because we see his love for those who he's having trouble with. We see his patience. We see his determination. We see his commitment. He's without fear. He gave all of himself to the church. He gave all of himself for what he was doing. All of it. Ultimately, his life. And all of it was, was because of his commitment and faith in Christ. It's amazing. And when he was in the middle of being stoned, it didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> what do we hear him do? We hear him say something that Jesus almost said from the cross. He asked God to forgive them. He asked God to forgive the folks who are killing him. It's impressive. In fact, it's so impressive that what do we, what we see, did you catch this? We see a response from heaven. We see G, Jesus in heaven standing at the right hand of the Father. Have you heard that before? You know what? You haven't. This is the only place in Scripture where Jesus is standing next to the Father. And we don't really know why that is. And so I'm reading into this a little bit. Why do people normally stand when someone comes in the room? Why do, the, why do people get up when the president, the king, a dignitary walks in the room? They're communicating something, right? Right? They're saying, I'm going to honor you by standing. I don't know if that was the case, but something was impressive enough in Stephen that Jesus was standing. It's impressive to Jesus. And we have to then, therefore, take, pay, pay attention. Now back to sort of this, this Mother's Day connection. Some of the mothers in our lives have the very characteristics that Stephen has. Love, dedication, care, self-giving, putting others ahead, having a vision and taking you forward towards that vision of your family. And when somebody like Stephen does it, we call him a martyr. But when the women in our lives do it, we call him mom. And that's what you're supposed to do. So this is a day where we take a break and we, we say, actually, you're amazing. We don't 
tell our moms that enough. Now, I want to pivot just a minute. So this is a day for, for many of us that is a joyful day. But this is also, very frankly, a day that's not easy for some. And with as much excitement as I want to talk about how I think this is a great and important day, I want to honor the women in my life, and I hope that you can too, I also want to, with the same rigor, say, I know that this day is very hard for some of us. Because some of us have not had good relationships with our moms. The relationships are broken. Maybe our moms have hurt us. Maybe our mom has died and we miss her. We're reminded of that today more than any other day except maybe her birthday. Or maybe you're a mom who's lost a child. This is a difficult day for some. And so I want to make sure that we take all of this and bring it into the presence of God. Because the other reading today, the gospel reading, is really great because it addresses those of us who are hurting, not just on Mother's Day, but definitely on Mother's Day. Jesus is, in, in chapter 14 of John, he's having the Last Supper. He's getting ready to say goodbye to his disciples. There's some fear in the air. They know about what's going to happen. Jesus is aware of it. The Last Supper, the foot washing, all of that stuff. He's getting ready to say goodbye. And what is the first set of words that we hear him say to them? Don't let your hearts be troubled. That's all I want you to hear right now. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And I, and I know some of you might be saying, well, that's easy for you to say. Okay, fair enough. But let's pause. Who is saying this? Who's saying these words? The, the person who is saying these words is Jesus Christ. It's the same Jesus who wept at the sight of his friend's anguish and discomfort because Lazarus had died. It's the same Jesus who came all the way from the right hand of God to come down in the flesh and meet all of us in a, in a tangible, physical way so we could know the love of God in person. It's the same Jesus who is compelled by His very being to do every single act of mercy and compassion, whether it was to feed somebody who was hungry. Well, I'm Jesus. I'm going to feed them. They're hungry. Why wouldn't I? Or somebody's sick or hurt. I'm going to heal them. That's who I am. And so the person who's saying, don't let your heart be troubled, has some credibility. In fact, he's the only one in the history of the universe who can say, don't let your hearts be troubled. And we know how to receive that a little bit. Because he's saying, I got you. I'm with you. He says it in our text. He's, uh, later on in John, he'll say, I'm, gonna, I'm never going to abandon you. I'm going to provide you with the advocate, the Holy Spirit, so that you never ever are without me. This is the Christ who loves us so much, he ends up on the cross. And he says, bring it to me. Bring it all. Bring your sadness today. Bring your worry, bring your fear, bring your disappointment. That's why I'm here. It may not feel good today, but I'm here and I won't abandon you. And there will be, a, there'll be better times to come. One day, this is all going to be better. And he, I can imagine him sitting with me and, and sitting with you and saying, let me tell you something after he gives you a big hug and may cry with you. He says, I, let me tell you something. I'm here. I came so that you may have life and that you can bring all this stuff and, and you can lay it at the foot of my cross. That's why I've died. And one day, to quote Revelation, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. So, we've got two very different feelings today, potentially. 
For some, this is the greatest day of the year, and I'm excited about that. For some, this is a very difficult day. And both perspectives matter. They matter to me. They, matter, they should matter to the body of Christ. I know they matter to the Lord. For some, this is such a hard day, they, they leave town. Or it's hard to get out of bed. I've been trying to reach one of my friend's moms. My, two of my, these, these women I was talking about have lost their sons, and I can't reach them. And I know why. One went to Mexico, and the other one went to her, her bay house. I, I can't even give them flowers on, on Mother's Day because they're absent. It hurts too much. So you've got to let the love of Christ, the love of God the Father into this. Because it's the Father, the providing Father, the compassionate Son, and the comforting Holy Spirit. Those together provide our our true home where we're embraced, we're loved, and we're promised some healing now and perfect healing to come. And so where do we experience these things? Mother Church. On Mother's Day, when we say honor your mother, we're, we can also let the church be our mother. Have you heard that phrase before, Mother Church? I hope so. Because it's a place that we're supposed to be able to go because of who Jesus Christ is, who God the Father is, who the Holy Spirit is, where we can go and be comforted, we can find hope, we can have a hug, we can rejoice, we can bring our tears, we can go and be who God made us to be and together work on who God calls us to be. This is our home. So on Mother's Day, God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're grateful today that this is Mother's Day where we, no matter who we are, someone for whom this is a, a wonderful, joyous day or somebody for whom this is a very difficult day, your message is that you love us and that you will ultimately make all things right. Lord, would today we pray for those for whom this is a difficult day. We also give you thanks for, for those who have made this day wonderful because they are our moms. In the midst of all of this, Lord, we pray that you be present. And we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.